Today I'm going to bring you nine AI art and AI writing tools that are completely free that I highly recommend you check out. Plus, since a lot of these models are very limited on their free version, I'm also going to give you some of the large language models that I think are best because they are the lowest cost for the best return. Stick around to the end for that bit. Now, pretty much all of these tools are not completely free. There are usually paid versions and there is a free version to kind of get your appetite wet to give you a free sample. But if you use all of these tools collectively, you are likely to be able to get quite a lot of free stuff, free art, free writing for very, very cheap or no money at all. The first and most obvious options here are the chatbots, the ones that we're all familiar with by this point, the most famous of which is ChatGPT. And of course, if you've been been following this channel for a while, you will be quite familiar with ChatGPT as well as Claude. Claude is another big one that I highly recommend for authors, especially because the text sounds a lot more natural. It's a lot more creative and just generally a better chat bot for that sort of work. And then there's Gemini, which is a really good one for brainstorming and things like that. It seems to be really good. It also has a really solid knowledge of the web because it was developed by Google. So it can be a good research assistant as well. And all three of these chat bots all have a free here. It's kind of limited. There's not much you can do with it, but ChatGPT and Claude especially have really powerful models, even at the free tier. And so I recommend using them if you can. Just understand you are likely to be throttled pretty early on and not be able to do a whole lot of work with it if you want to actually be using it for work, for actual, you know, use cases in your life where you're going to be using them heavily. None of these free plans are really going to help you much there, but they can be a good way to get your toes wet and to see like, can it actually work for you? Is it worth the money for you to use these plans. Similar to these chatbots is another one called Perplexity, which also is $20 a month for the pro plan, but has a pretty robust free plan. And Perplexity is basically the natural evolution of a search engine. It's my favorite tool at the moment to use for research because you can use it like you would Google and the answers it gives you are pretty good. Plus it cites all the sources so you can check to make sure the answers are accurate and things like that. And it does a really good job of summing up all the information that you might need to know on any particular topic. I myself am using it a lot more than I use Google right now. It's one of the few of these tools that I actually do have a paid account for. But even if you don't want the paid account, you can use the free version. It'll give you a lot of good stuff just from that free version. Another free one that I wanted to point out here was character.ai. Now character.ai is a little bit, is one of those things I haven't dug into too much because I don't see it as much of a help in terms of actually being able to write books or brainstorm or anything like that. There are characters here that are specialized around things like brainstorming or writing a story or practicing a language and stuff like that. But basically the idea behind character.ai is you can interact with any character that has been trained to talk in a certain way. So you can get insights from that character and things like that. Or it can just be a fun little game to play. And with the exception of a few of these, like the brainstorm ideas, I don't really see these being very practical in the sense of being very helpful. But it can be a fun little thing to tinker around with, to play around with and see if it does spark some ideas. It can be really good for the creative process to interact with the character. And so having that added in there can be really helpful and it is completely free, so it's definitely worth a look. And those are the only ones based around language and large language models that I really want to cover here. But next I wanna take a look at some free options for AI art and a couple that I highly recommend. The first of these is called Ideogram, which has a pretty good free plan, allows you to generate a number of different objects. And you can see the quality that Ideogram makes is quite good. I've used it on a couple of projects. I particularly like it for book cover applications and things like that. There are some use cases where I just can't seem to get good output and something like Mid Journey looks a lot better, but usually I'm able to get something quite unique and quite crisp. Like that's one of the things I like about Ideogram. It's, I can't explain it better than it's crisp, right? The lines and the details are direct. It doesn't look fuzzy or kind of that sort of otherworldly glow to it that you'll see in a lot of Dali images. It's just good stuff. It's also pretty good at text compared to a lot of other models out there. You'll see like this one says just hair today. This is not actually edited or anything. This was generated exactly from the, from the AI model. Here's another one, good morning sunshine. Like that's great. The text there is great. You could easily put this on a sticker, which is what it looks like it's been designed for. And a lot of cool things you could do with Ideogram. You get a number of free generations every day. If you're 
using it, so definitely one to check out. Another one that gives you a number of free generations every day is Leonardo, which is another one that I highly recommend. There's a lot of flexibility with Leonardo, which is one of the reasons why I like it the most. You can edit things, you can do it in a bunch of different styles. There's a whole lot of things that you can do with Leonardo. It's one of the more user-friendly ones too that has a lot of fine-tuning power with it. And so definitely one I would check out here as well. Another one that I haven't personally worked with, but I saw it mentioned in a lot of other places where they were talking about free tools is one called Playground. It's just called playground.com. It's another AI art generator with editing capabilities. So you see like this guy right here, it's drawing his mustache and asking it to make it pink and it'll redraw that specific section to make it pink. So it's a lot like Adobe Photoshop in that way and Adobe Photoshop's editing tools where you can select a specific area and have it change that area of the image. So that can be a really good editing tool, not just for AI art, but if you wanted to use AI to edit existing images, like real world images, you can use it for that as well, I believe. So definitely one to check out there. The last one I wanted to talk about was called Luma Labs. And this one's actually a video generator that I have been playing around with and think is actually pretty good because of the processing power that video generation takes up the free plan is very limited but you do get 30 generations every month completely for free and that's pretty impressive so you can at least go and try it out and see if you like it i've found from playing around with this so far that the text to video capabilities are not very good but if you put in an image and ask it to give it some motion and things like that and you specifically direct what that motion should be it tends to be pretty good for instance here is some art from one of my book covers that i took and just asked it to give give it some motion and it did a pretty good job. All right, and that is everything for the free AI art and AI writing tools that I had for you today. But I wanted to leave you with the three large language models that are my favorite to use, specifically because they are so cheap. The first one is Claude 3 Haiku, which is an incredibly cheap large language model. And I think we're gonna be getting Claude 3.5 Haiku in the near future. So look forward to that. That will probably be cheaper and even more advanced in terms of its capabilities. The next one is GPT-40 Mini. GPT-40 Mini is possibly the cheapest and most advanced model out there in terms of the capabilities to the cost ratio. It is so cheap. It is one of the cheapest models I've ever looked at. And the capabilities of GPT-40 Mini are tremendous for its size. It's still not something I would use for like actively writing the text of a book, for example, something that's really intensive and requires a lot of creative know-how and reasoning. But for basic tasks like brainstorming and summarization and other things that you might need it for, it is so cheap to as to be basically negligible. If you're using a service like Open Router to access these tools, you can use it and most maybe in a day worth of use, you might use up, you know, 10 cents, right? So it's a very, very capable model for the cost. That's why I put it as probably the best model out there for the cost to capability ratio. I would just use that. If you're looking for free tools, it's not technically free to use GPT-4 Mini, but if you're using using it in a tool like Novel Crafter, Open Router, or directly inside of OpenAI's Playground, the costs are gonna be so low as to basically be free. The third and last large language model that I wanted to mention is Mistral Nemo. Mistral Nemo is a smaller version of the Mistral models, and it's actually pretty darn good, even for creative text and things like that. Its cost is also very low, a lot closer to GPT-40 Mini, and while it's not quite as advanced as GPT-40 Mini, I do find it to be pretty good, and if you need a model that will do a few not safe for work things that GPT-40 Mini would not do and Claude 3 Haiku would not do, the Mistral models are usually a good one. There is some level of censorship on the Mistral models, but it really isn't for anything that an author would run into for the most part. As long as you're staying within certain boundaries, you'll probably be okay. I have run some tests. I'm not going to disclose what the nature of those tests are, but you can push it to a point where it will stop you. But for the most part, if you write erotica and things like that, you'll be fine. And those are all my favorite free LLMs and art generating tools that you have at your disposal, definitely go check them out. However, if you do want to get serious about using AI in your writing or in your art, you are probably going to need to select a paid version at some point. But that's kind of the point of all of these free versions of these models is because the companies are losing money themselves to offer it to you for free, because if it's free for you, then it's costing somebody else, right? And they give you that little free sample. And then it's up to you to determine which one you like the best. So you can check it out later and use it more heavily in the future and maybe have a paid version 
version. If you want to know some of my thoughts on some of the biggest models here, for instance, ChatGPT and Claude, if you want to know which one I like better, I have a whole video I did comparing ChatGPT to Claude and which one I think to be the better model so that if you could only have one, you would know which one I would pick. So go check that video out and I'll see you in the next video.